Now that we've created the assault rifle item type, let's go ahead and create the actual assault rifle item. For this video, we're going to focus on the first person perspective, but there will also be third person elements since we're going to want the item to appear in the full body character's hand. So this video will apply if you're doing a first and third person character. Let's go ahead and get started by going to the Tools Opsiv Ultimate Character Controller Item Manager. And here you'll see a window that should look pretty familiar in that it's similar layout to the Character Manager. At the top we have a link to different example configurations that you can use as a base when you're setting up your own item. Let's go through each of these fields now. The first field asks for the item and we are going to be setting up an assault rifle. So I'm going to search for the assault rifle model file and I'm going to drag that in. It names it my or it names it assault rifle, but we want to call it my assault rifle. For a character, I'm going to leave that field blank because we want to create a prefab item. Prefab items allow you to add that single item to multiple different types of characters and then it's also used if your character has multiple models associated with it. This will allow your item to transfer between the different models as you're changing the character model. So I am going to leave the character field blank. Slot ID specifies which slot the item should be equipped in. By default, a slot ID of 0 maps to the right hand and an ID of 1 maps to the left hand. This is the same slot ID that was set up when we created the character under these item slots. If you click adjust slots, you could see which ID each slot corresponded to. Item definition is the item definition that we created earlier or the item type that we created earlier. Item types just inherit item definitions. Add item prefab to item definition. This will add the prefab to that item definition that you created. And we can see that underneath this um, prefabs layout or prefabs element. Um, I had an extra one right there that I just removed. So now we have no prefabs associated with the item type. Um, when you create item now, it will add this new prefab to that item definition or that item type. Animator item ID specifies the ID within the animator that the assault rifle maps to. By default, we have a value of one for the demo scene. On the documentation page, we list all the different item IDs for the animator. These are basically just random numbers or arbitrary numbers that we chose to represent an assault rifle within the animator. Under the first person section, we have, do we want to add the first person item? And we want to add a first person item, so we're gonna leave that enabled. The first person base object specifies the arms that the character should, or the item should use. Because we are not adding it to a character and we're not having separate arms specifically for this assault rifle, we are gonna leave that field blank. First person visible item specifies the model for the item that we're creating. This is just that same assault rifle object that we dragged in. The animator controller specifies the animator controller for the assault rifle. And we have one created here. And this allows the trigger, for example, to be pulled when the character is firing the assault rifle. We are going to set up a third person item so that there will be a shadow when the character is carrying the item in a full body view. And the third person item properties are very similar to first in that it specifies which model should we use for the actual item. And then we have to specify the animator controller. Under actions, um, actions are the actual function that the item performs. So there are the, there's like actions such as shootable or melee or magic. Um, you can copy existing item actions from other items when you're creating your new item and that you can specify using the action template. Um, we're going to create all the actions from scratch. So I am just going to leave the template blank and I'm instead going to add the shootable action. So now that I'm going to hit build item and we should see that we need to specify a prefab name. So I'm just going to call it my assault rifle. And here we have our my assault rifle. Now, if I hit play, 
nothing is actually going to happen. And the reason for that is because we created a prefab item so the character doesn't know about the item yet. In order to make the character aware of the item, I want to go to the default loadout. And let me clear this one. So if I go to the default loadout, um, I can now select the item type that we had previously created. So I want to give the character an assault rifle and some bullets. And this mapping between the assault rifle and the prefab is within the item type. So if we now go to the item type, we can see under prefabs we have the My Assault Rifle. So now when I hit play, we should have a item that is equipped by the character. So that it's not positioned correctly, but at least it's equipped here. We can see the first person arms and the first person arms are in the correct animator controller state. Um, and at least in the shadow, we can see that there is an assault rifle. I think it's this one. Um, you'll notice that at runtime in the game view, you do not see the first person shadows. So there is a first person shadow in the scene view, but not in the game view. So all that looks good. And we only see the shadow for the uh, main assault rifle, the full body version of it. Now the assault rifle has been created, so we can go ahead and start customizing it. The first thing that we want to do is reposition where it gets placed because it's obviously not in the right spot. And we can do that under this local spawn position and local spawn rotation. So now, now I'm gonna hit play. And in order to position the item, we just take the transform and then we start to rotate and change the position of it in order to get it in what looks like a, a good position. So this takes a little bit of tweaking and I've already done this. So let me just go ahead and copy the values that end up looking good. So I can do that under this local spawn position. And we are using these values. We need to position both the first and the third person perspective. So I'm gonna set the local spawn position for a third person perspective as well. So now we should have the assault rifle in the correct position. So the assault rifle is positioned correctly on the hands. Um, we can see that, let's look at the shadow and looking at the shadow in the game view, also, it also looks good. So, so we're set up there. Um, if I go to, actually I just unequipped. So now, now I have the assault rifle. We can see that the first person arms are not in the correct position at all. Um, and that is determined by the uh, first person perspective item. Um, let me go to that and we can adjust the position offset right here. So as I change this value, you can see we're, we're changing the location of the arms. So having it kind of moved down and a little bit rotated is probably the right position. Um, but in the next set of videos, we're gonna go into the details on how to kind of the nitty gritty of configuring a new item with the properties or with the different action properties. This video, I just wanted to focus on just getting the assault rifle in and getting it a very basic setup. But next we're gonna go ahead and configure it and make sure it looks, make sure it looks pretty.